Hi everybody, Rob here again. Uh, there was a request made recently to do a video on how to best orient models to get um, accurate mating surfaces so that this will fit right here uh, without needing any filing or every, anything like that. So it's already cut by the artist um, and I can tell you by looking at this, it's going to be a tight fit even if they're exactly accurate prints. So in order to ensure that that happens, um, there are a couple things that I would recommend. So one is, this is the build plate, that side's the screen. The screen facing side has better dimensional accuracy um, because it's not being pulled on by the supports. It's supported by the rest of the model. So you'll wanna face the mating side, the joint, towards the screen if at all possible. So, for other reasons as well, this model is going to be supported something like this, right? The body. That ensures this is accurate and the model damage is hidden on the bottom, right? Out of sight. Because we don't look at things like this most of the time when we're holding them. We look at them like this, right? We look down on stuff. So looking down on stuff means that when you have marks under here, you can't even see it. That's one of the tricks of good supports in my opinion. Uh, the other thing is on here this needs to be precise. So ideally for the sake of that being accurate you'd want to support it like that. But that's obviously a terrible choice. Um, so what you're going to want to do is not rotate it laterally. Rotate it back this way um, and when you rotate it this way you can then support down here as the anchors and this is going to be built and supported by all this other material here. If you look at it horizontally, this will all be built before this even starts. So if this is all anchored well down here, this builds with no supports attached and it builds uh, as accurate as your printer is, um, just like if it was turned this way. But when you orient it this way, you're relying on Z axis accuracy. So that brings to the next point. So now that we've got, let's say we're going to print it like that. And I don't know that I am yet, but let's say we do. And this is printed like this. Those joints should be accurate. Now, how do you make sure they fit? So that brings me to calibrating your printer. So to calibrate your printer, my suggestion is to use a model um, with a known um, dimension something easy like this right so it's 50 by 50 by 50 and you print it directly on the build plate so you're going to want to print one of these off with no adjustments made then measure it right and they're labeled so you can tell which axis is which and just so you know right the green axis is y the x-axis is red just like on the model so you print this off and then you measure it and ensure that you avoid, if you have any element, elephant footing or whatever, um, ensure you avoid getting that in your measurement. So you're measuring the true face to face, not the bottom mess that sometimes happens for a lot of people. So that'll give you your offset for X and Y. And just like the Nerdtronic video, um, you're gonna want to do the math so let's say it came out at 49.8 millimeters, divide that by 50, and you get 0.996. So that means you're, you know, transfer the decimal place over, you're 0.4% off on, let's say that was the x-axis. So to compensate for that, uh, you could scale it 0.4%, or you could go into your printer and you can take this number so if you want to make it bigger, the model bigger, it came out too small, this number needs to get smaller. And if you want to make it smaller, this number needs to get bigger. So what you could do is take 134.4 times 0 0.996, 133.86. So what that's going to do is going to um, effectively shrink the screen in the 
in the rendered file as it comes out. So proportionally, the model will take up more of the screen, but since you didn't physically shrink the screen, now the model size matches the actual size because you adjust it through software. So what you would do then is go into here and put 133.86, um, but this only takes a, uh, oh, it does take two decibels now. Um, and then let's say your y-axis came out to 49.6. When you measured the y-axis, you divide it by 50 because that was the original model size. And you end up with 0.8%. So 0.992 times 75.6 means this would then need to be, uh, I'm going to call that 75. I mean, ideally don't round, but when it's 0.995, that's 75. Um, and so this is the actual size. This is what the software treats it as. And then it will, everything you print will be scaled correctly along X and Y with that specific resin. So each resin, if you want it to be super precise, has to be calibrated in this way. I know, it's frustrating. Um, so that takes care of X and Y. Now for Z, what you need to do is, um, you know, let's say that came out to, um, let's say it came out to 49.2. So divide that by 50 for what it should have been. And you have a 1.6% deviation along Z where you need it to grow. So 1.6%. So then what you would do is go in here and go into scaling unlock it and make it 101.6. So now when you print this, it will be the actual size because you've already calibrated X and Y in the printer settings. And now you've compensated for Z offset here in this scaling. So one thing about Leechy is if you have multiple models, right? Let's lock this one back. Well, let's set them back to 100 and then lock it again. So if you have multiple models and you try to unlock it, you can't. So you go into one and unlock it. Now select them all and you can make them 101.6. Right? And now when you click on each one to verify, they're all 101.6. So that's how I get to actual precise models with my resins. Um, there are some general settings you can use. Um, so for the IB, um, a 2% Z scaling before you slice, it takes, you know, 30 seconds. Scale it up by 2% if you're printing at 50 um, micron, and scale it up by 2.4% if you're printing at 25 microns. Um, and you should end up with very close to perfect parts. Uh, the last set I did, um, X and Y were exactly right. Um, the pressure that I apply on the measuring device um, changes it from 50 to 50.01 or 02 or 49.8 or 49.99. Um, so it's essentially what I would call exactly right, X and Y. And then Z, uh, the last one I did it was 49.94. So that's 0 0.06 millimeters across 50 um, with a flexible and soft resin. So I consider that phenomenally accurate and all the pieces fit together exactly like this should circles with circles etc but i hope this helps you guys get better multi-piece models and makes it so you don't have to file the joints and if you do have to file the joints you have to file them a lot less um, yeah and then regarding orientation um, just remember keep this face you know the jointed face the joining joining face um, from being the starting side of the model. So, you know, you would think this makes the most sense because this is where all the detail is. It minimizes supports and everything. And that's true. And that is a strong argument for doing it in this direction. And on some models, doing it in this direction is the right answer. So if you have to do so, try and give this bottom jointing, uh, joining face as much incline off the build plate as you can get away with. So like this would be fine. 
Um, but what you want to remember is when you do that, anchor it back here, right? Somewhere that it's easy to repair and hidden. And then minimize the number of supports that you use along this face as long as you're using a resin strong enough to build at this angle without failure. And that comes from trial and error, learning what works with your printer and resin combination. Um, so for example, on the IB with ZMUD, I would probably put a number of supports in here, but notice I'm not hitting the edge. I'm only hitting near the edge, right? Not on the edge, near the edge. The only place I'll hit the edge directly is down here. And that's only to ensure that it holds its form. And then I would hollow this and put a hole uh, in the center here. But uh, yeah, I hope that helps. Uh, I know it's longer than I meant it to be, but had some stuff to say. Have a good one.